Have a good match. Have a good match. Jill, thank you very much. It's been a marathon affair, this outfitting that it should come down to what might be the, the final three the or first frame. four frames. Look at results to break. And I'll tell you what, Ken, for both players, a very important match, this. Yeah, without doubt, a lot at stake for both players. And, of course, whoever wins this gets a coveted place in that Champion of Champions as well later on in the year. That's a nice little bonus to be having a chance playing in that. So, yeah, a lot at stake for these players and a lot of money at stake. And it's great that it's come down to this last match as well, uh, Phil. It's exciting stuff, I know. Luca only needs a draw. Yes, when the format was proposed and announced, my worry was that the last match of the event might be anticlimactic. Not so. Yeah, we haven't had too many dead rubbers, even in the groups in the early stage of this tournament, so it's been... A wonderful tournament for all the players, and particularly, as we said, sometimes the high break comes into play, and that's been quite exciting as well. Some of the groups have been decided by that. We've had a lot of sentry breaks as well. The standard has been pretty good when you were expecting players to be very rusty because they haven't played since Gibraltar back at the end of March. Of the two players, probably Luca has played better of today. But, you know, in snooker and sport, you just never know. Every game can be so different. I think the start in this match is very important for both players. Yes, this match is being broadcast throughout Europe. And the interest in Belgium will be considerable. Oh, no. Foul. Look at myself full. Well, that's a very casual cardinal sin for a snooker player to play a shot like that. He's only, I mean, he's got so much room. Just come off that side cushion, leave the cue ball on his top cushion, playing a the old Canadian dump shot. Cliff Torborn, of course, was one of the first players to introduce that shot. Such an easy opener. Give your opponent. Yeah, I didn't want to have to play the pink here because if he pots the pink, the pink will not be available for its spot, so it'll be tied up, I'm sure, after. Goes into the pocket. And we'll only have the blue to play around with. That's a bit short of pace.
He's looking <coughs> at the two reds. Just above the pink. Are they a possible plant? Seven. And he also has this red up into the top right hand corner pocket. The green pocket. Oh, he can try and cut it into the right centre. A little bit more difficult into the right centre than it is up into the green pocket. Yes, with a considerably reduced control of the white as well. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Thanks. Not just potting the red, but stunning it over for the blue and obtaining the angle he wanted. Yeah, very confidently played, wasn't it? He had a quick look at that red again on the pink spot. If that's available, he may be able to try and pot this and nudge the red just to the left of it and beyond the pink. 30. A slight angle. I think he can play that shot, and this would certainly open things up for him. Just a gentle little nudge on the red, just to the left here. Oh, not that gentle. Forty. No. So that's gone wrong. Long blue at the corner to keep the break going. Excellent pot again. He's gonna need one one more good pot. This long red. Missed the black and nice. reds and back up for blue. Very fortunate indeed. He'd overshot that cue ball. But he's got a lucky break there. A nice little kiss on the red and the pink. 26. He's taken an adventurous route here. Got through his first group purely by having a higher break than Jack Lazowski. It was that tight. He won his semi final group with five 33. points also. To this point, three wins, five draws. Undefeated. And if he remains undefeated, give him the silverware. Well, he certainly deserves it, doesn't he? Undefeated throughout and such a high quality players that he's faced. And he's still working his way to try and win this first frame. And he's back in prime position. And took a chance there. And I think it's worked out nicely. Excellent shot. I must say, I've been very impressed with him all day. I haven't seen too much of him He's being on the other table. In the first Fourth. group. But uh, today, I think his focus has been excellent.
46. 47. Can play on two reds here. The red that's in the little cluster there around the black or the red just to the left of the pink. Quick check on the score, 57 ahead. So red, pink. 54. Put them 64. One more red and a high value colour. And Ben Wollaston will need a snooker. Flicked on some. Lovely side there to widen the angle for the red to middle. 60. Sixty one. Nice double seven. here. Seventy one ahead, just sixty seven remaining. This would stop Ben Wollaston coming back to the table if this goes in. Well, he's missed it, so Ben Wollaston will come to the table, but he'll require snookers and a wonderful 67 from Luca Purcell there. And it all came from that careless safety shot, didn't it, Phil? It's just that in off of Ben Wollaston. Well, yes, I'm not a great fan of the word careless in snooker commentary but that really did apply there that was careless wasn't it anywhere but being off so Fifty-eight the difference now, so two snookers needed. Thirty. But always when there's a red on the table, hope of a lucrative free ball. Yeah, it's just doing this mats. And uh, as you said, he's gonna need a couple of snookers, but he can't take two blacks with these two reds, so he may have to take two pinks, so Need he'll need another snooker. Fourteen. So pink followed by another red and pink, and then try for some snookers on that last red. And just in case that he may get a free ball, that, that would be his best chance. You'd feel. Twenty-seven. Well, Molson, twenty-seven. 
Not bad. Especially with the red so close to the pink. Yeah, that's about as good as you could hope for. Got to be careful here, Luca Brussel. He's going to play the two cushion escape, but he doesn't want to overhit this. He doesn't want to hit the pink either. Ah, oh, good shot. Nice shot. Snooker this time. We'll just about see the left hand side of the red. We've seen a lot of frames like this today where a player hasn't been able to pot frame ball plus two or three to make absolutely sure. Yeah, there's another good snooker here. Two cushion escape once again. Almost on four. So now forty points the difference, of course thirty five remaining. Still two more four point snookers. May try and take the black out of the cushion here. He may have attempted that. He's left the red. Tough though. Almost dead straight with the cue ball glued to that ball cushion. Brazil won't be panicking, but like to see the back of this frame. Unlucky. Good attempt there to try and get that cue ball tight behind the black and that would have been a good snooker. So now we may just take this red on into the green pocket, maybe try and get the snooker behind the blue. Oh, well, I miscued. <laughs> if he had a missed the red, that would have made this a little bit more interesting. So what does Ben do here? Does he try and pot red and pink? And they still require two four-point snookers. Or does he try and keep the red on the table? Try to keep the red on the table, get the cue ball behind the black, and oh wow, what a great attempt at once again. Very unlucky. Apologizes, the green doing Brussels bidding. Not how he played it, but he'll take it. Especially oh. now. Look at Brussels for.
Bom. So first blood to Luca Purcell. Of course he only needs a draw, so one more frame. And uh, three possible three frames to be played. Five. An enviable position to be in. Eight. But not quite over the line yet. Oh, he's an unconventional player. Twelve. There's no doubt. Cracking to watch. That fluid cue action. Yeah, he's got plenty of cue power and. Luca Brussel, 17. Lots of talent. First and now he's within touching distance of the title. Here in Milton Keynes, Brussel on the brink. That is Luca Brussel, so near to his second professional title. He won the 2017 China second Championship, fight. a very big ranking event Almost in Guangzhou, China, beating Sean Murphy in the final. This would be equally sweet. Pushing the boat out he either could have had a go with that red. There's plenty of room around the back of the black and back up for bog, so not getting too confident. I mean, that's what I said. I've just been very impressed with his focus and concentration today. Being on it right from the beginning. And particularly the way he played Phil against uh, Stewart in that first match. Yes, Bingham scored twelve points in the entire contest. Brussel finishing off with breaks of 105 and 106. This, though, is short of the mark. Well short. Yeah, and of course, playing that particular red has opened up the black now into both pockets. No choice of reds for Ben Wollaston here. Normally so proficient at this particular shot. game today hasn't been at its 100% best but that's better yeah. excellent shot nicely on the black and a nice little angle just to stun into the red above the black and beyond the red into the left corner pocket good opener Eight. Ben Mullison were to no. win this frame in one visit, Phil. It just put a little bit of doubt in Luca's mind. Give him something to think about. He's basically got to view this Wollaston as being two down with three 16. to play. And he's come back and won many a match from that predicament, so why not tonight? Six. 
seventy. Mm. It doesn't look like a great angle from this. May be able to. Well, he can just about force it around. Two questions. Struggling a bit. Once you sort of twenty way straight on the black, you can lose the cue ball a little bit now. He would like to be a bit closer to this red. It would have been no problem just to screw back for the black. He's talking about trying to hold the cue ball where the red is, and then take the pink. Twenty five. Take the pink into the left centre and be certainly bringing some more reds into play here. Oh, but not at that pace. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not gone in yet. It has now. <laughs> well, <laughs> what a shot that was. <laughs> what a timely fluke. Even he's a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> at the end of proceedings, will we be looking back on that? <laughs> that is a beauty. Yes, I think he was feigning embarrassment. He was loving it, really. <laughs> it's definitely worth another look. Have a look at the the check that hit this cushion right hand side and back across the table. Oh, it's a belter. Not great from his viewpoint, but certainly from Ben Mullison's, that was lovely. Taking his time. Trying to get it exactly right. Thanks, Bob. Rob Spencer. 31. Thirty-two. And just look at the reds, the way they're situated. This is what you might do when you're on the practice table, just throw the reds out down pink and black. Let's not forget he was in all kinds of trouble in his semi-final group. 39. When in his second match he played Tom Ford. He had three centuries. Ford didn't score a point. If he could reproduce that excellence, who knows? Fault. Yeah, and I think that's the importance of trying to win this frame in one visit now. And particularly after what's happened, because Luke will be, you know, he'll be very disappointed he's not at the table and, and taken these himself, but for that fluke. So tries to win this frame one visit, puts a little bit of doubt in his opponent's mind. And gives himself a little chance. That's all you want. 47. Forty-eight. You know, when, when that happens against you, Phil, and you're sitting in your chair, you don't mind if a guy knocks in the long red and makes a big break from that, but when he flukes the ball halfway 56. through the break, when you know this, this should be yours and this should be your break, that can hurt you a little bit more, could put a little bit of doubt in your mind. And You know, when everything was going so well for Luca, now he's going to have to, if Ben Mullison wins this frame from here, it's going to be interesting to see how he responds in the next frame. The late Eddie Charlton hated 63. flukes to such an extent that he wanted to outlaw them from the game. I'm glad his opinion didn't prevail. They really 64. do add all kinds of spice. Come a little short on the blue, so I'm going to have to take frame ball from mid distance. Six. 
69. 70. Oh, that's the frame, Phil. That's oh, a, a lucky one, but they all count. Now, can he go on and make a century from this? Seventy-seven. He's already made more centuries in this tournament than the rest of his season put together. Eighty-four. Ninety-one. Ninety-two. So black for 98, that red. Oh, well, I thought that red was on, just the left of the pink. He just decided to bring 99. it out. And this, have a, just have a look at this pink again. It's well worth watching. We've seen it a couple of times already, but the check side on the pink. 100. Back into the middle pocket. And what a pot that was while we were looking at that pink. He's got the 100, and he's nicely opened the pink and red as well. But what a beauty that was, wasn't it, Phil? Well, in many respects, because of the side, it defied geometry. <laughs> 106. Well, a possible 141. Total clearance here for Ben Wollaston. 107. 7 Wouldn't be his highest tournament break. 114. He's made a 147 in Lisbon, Portugal, in a European Tour event six years ago. But to make it in a final on TV, a total clearance. 190. Feather in the cap. 123. Albeit glued together by that outrageous fluke. Well, they do say every great journey began with a single step, and this is the first step if Ben Wollison is going to turn this tournament around in this final. It's the first step, he's got another couple to come, but this has been a fabulous break. 141 on the frame. No ben point Wollaston. in having luck if you don't capitalise upon it. What a break that was from Ben Wollaston. This tournament still very much up for grabs.
Ben Wollaston needs the next two frames to be the Championship League champion. Third frame. Do we'll not discount it. Back. Maybe fate is on the side of the man from Leicester. And what we do know is if Wollaston were to win this frame, everything would depend on the final frame of the tournament. Now, in a group format, that would be extraordinary. Yeah. Well, I was just contemplating that fact. Ben Wollaston must win this. But that would be incredible if he wins this frame. It would go down to the final frame to win this tournament and also for a place in the champions, champion of champions, of course, in November. Yes, Brazil has played in that fine tournament before as a result of winning the China Championship. But for Ben Wollaston, what an opportunity. The black is available, I think, into the same pocket as the red. Although he's played it, a little yeah. cannon there. He's unlucky. Good pot. Wanted sort of a half ball cannon on that red just to knock it away and still be on this black. He got a full ball cannon. And the cue ball is too close to the black to pot it. Possibly another example, he may be thinking that things are going his way. Yeah, you can play it like that if he wishes. He only wants to just brush off the black and leave the cue ball on this top cushion. It's quite awkward. Doesn't want to leave a pot, of course. Doesn't have to have his hand on the table. Oh, oh Mr. Black, so that will be put Miss. back, I'm sure. Look at Brasol Wall, Ben Wilson's son. Well, when you're craning over like that, your alignment is completely askew. Well, he could play the safety shot off the red on the right-hand side, but... Even if he puts Luca back in, he's still going to be in the same position. Yeah. So it, uh, it, it's, he's dead right to put him back in here because it's an awkward one to hit. Could miss it again, and then he'd have to be warned. And let's not forget <laughs> against Mark Joyce. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> he fell victim to the yeah. three miss oh. rule. That was in the semi final groups. More circumspect this time.
he's taken this red off to left hand side cushion. Wouldn't be my choice. I feel if he had a brushed off the pack and got the cue ball up behind the yellow, that red would have acted as a, a little bit of a blocker coming the back down that side of the table. Pretty good. He's blocked the pack. Maybe forcing Ben into having a go with this red. Not a lot of a gap to work with there. But he can try and judge that cue ball between black and red. Back up for blue or ball colour here. Good pot Whoa. and excellent cue ball to negotiate through the gap there. Yeah, not bad. Three. Just wanted another couple of rolls of the cue ball so he'd be dead straight on this red and then it could have taken black. Four. Good short the pace. Now wonder, will he? take this black on. He's having a look at the blue. He may come around and have a look at the black. The black into the corner. Perfect angle off the top cushion. And into the pack. Now he's having a look at it. It's a big shot. And it's not that easy. But it would be an aggressive shot. Now he's having a look at it. And if it works out, he's definitely careering into the pack of red. So Big shot this. How's his look? It's not bad. I think he's got a red into the right centre. Yes, the gap has opened up. You'll have him. That was the correct shot, the aggressive shot. Twelve. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to notice at one stage. He was lined up for the blue, but the crack shot, as you said, Phil. And now, have a look at the reds. And after being at the table for the whole of the last frame. 17. I'm certainly queuing nicely now. So I'll be full of confidence here. And it's amazing, 18. but that fluke could have torn this whole match on its head. Still a long way to go, but things can happen in matches like this. We've seen it over the years so many times. A little bit of luck here, there. A fluke ball. One player in complete ascendancy, and it just changes the whole match. I'm not saying it's going to happen here, but it's quite possible. 24. Twenty-five. You know, can their only previous meetings, two of them, were in the shootout. We could be heading for another shootout this evening. A one-frame shootout. All the marbles. 
Third six three. Well, I wouldn't put it past him to end the frame from this visit. Still got a bit of work to do, but he's got three reds there around the pink spot that are in the open. No real work to do with the cue ball. Forty. Already a 46 point lead. Forty-one. I'm sure when he lost his first match in the semi-final group to Martin O'Donnell, the prospect of lifting the trophy must have seemed light years away. Forty-six. Fifty-two points in the lead. So two reds and two blacks will be enough. Forty-seven. the split gone wrong has he got this red left of the pink he's down having a good look at it is he on it into the 50. left center it's very close a couple of times in his previous match he got down and looked as though he couldn't pot a ball and then knocked it in <laughs> same thing there <laughs> Just this black. We will go 68 points into the lead with just 67 remaining. Just checking the scores. Taking a bit of a breather. This has been a wonderful break off a fantastic long red. Luca 66. just got to sit. He knows this. One more frame to go. And what a big frame it's going to be. That will stop Luca coming 65. back to the table. And I think it's fitting, to be honest, Phil. I mean, we've had such a, a wonderful 12 days, is it, we've been here. And to go right down to the final frame to win the championship is just a, a brilliant finish to a great tournament. Sixty-nine. Well, the last couple of frames from Williston have been inspired, and to do it when he's done it, fantastic. Yes, he was lucky in the previous frame. There's no denying that. Seventy-five. But what a follow-up. Seventy-six. This is great stuff, I must say. It just shows you how high 84. the standard is. These players ranked in the top 40 players 84. in the world, but still producing snooker of the highest standard. This will be two centuries in a row. What a final frame we have coming up, Phil. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit tense for both players already here. So much work has been put into this tournament for obvious reasons by both Matru Multisport and World Snooker. The people behind the scenes deserve this.
108. I'm sure a lot of people at home will be glued to their seats and couches watching this as well. This has been an admirable performance by Dan Wallace and the comeback. We're going down to the last frame. 190. For both players, it's going to be huge. 126 in the frame, Ben Wilson. By anyone's terms, two fantastic breaks. 141 and 126. Ben Wollaston leads 2-1. One. one more frame required. A total of 126 matches over 11 days have all come down to a single frame. Ben Wollaston splitting the reds off the black there. It was a bowl shot and it turned out to be a profitable one. Back to back centuries. He leads 2 1. Final if he can frame. win 3 1, he's crowned ben champion. If Luca Brussel comes back to force a draw, Brussel's name is engraved on the trophy. Oh, what a break off, bringing that red up to the middle of the table. That's a bad start. Mm. Expect them to miss that. I play cushion forest here, knock the red up the table, try and get that cue ball behind the yellow. By my reckoning, Ken, Ben Wollaston played 39 matches this season before this tournament, made two centuries. He's made five here. But he needs one more frame. <coughs> Tell you what, Phil, he'd give all those five centuries up just to make a 60 yard or a 70 break here in this last frame. A couple of 30 breaks he'd probably be happy with as well. <laughs> but it's been fabulous snooker from both players, to be honest. Luca has played his part as well today. He's been fantastic. That's not a chance really in these last couple of frames, so he can't really be too upset with himself. Yeah, that 
was a tough shot to try and avoid those reds on the right hand side of the table and get back to bulk. Black is open into the bottom right hand corner pocket and he is on a red just above the red above the pink. But not quite sure he's on this red into this bottom right hand corner pocket but he is on this red and this would take some queuing. Big shot to take on. He'd be on the black if he gets it. Oh! Wow, how close that was. So close, as the red was going towards the pocket, I wasn't sure. One. Good opener from Luca. Now it's over to you. Let's see what sort of response is left in Luca Brissell here. Good opener. And that will give him a bit of confidence. As I said, the black is open into that bottom right hand corner pocket. He only wants to try and get on one of these reds down the left hand side of the table. doesn't want to be anywhere but straight on this red and he's okay he's okay Three. may need the rest for this it's a bit of a stretch getting the rest for this one. So important. Knock this red in and just get nicely on the black. Take your time. Such a big shot. Ben Mullison came so close with that opening gambit. It's okay. That's what it may run a little bit further than he would have liked. And I think the good thing for Luca when he pots this black, it will still be available into the bottom right hand corner pocket. He'd love to take the red, and it's just below the black to the left. If you can get on that red after this black, then that would open the black into both pockets. So off the top cushion in behind that red, just below the black. And he can play it into the left corner pocket, but this would really open up things, Phil. This is what we've sorely missed for three months. 11. Snooker's late night drama. Twelve. I'm nervous for them both. Yeah, well, it's such a big match for both players and all the rewards that comes with it. A little bit straight on this. I think he can... He's just going to stun it in. Take this red into the right-hand corner pocket. But I would love to travel with the cue ball just a little bit further nice. away from the black. up for blue or pink here. Twenty. Mm. Just struggling with position when he got straight on that black. He's gonna need another good shot in and out of bulk here. Not many deciders are one in a single visit. We 
definitely has the cue power to force the blue in and come off two cushions or one cushion back up for the reds. Needs a lot of side now. It's okay, but a couple 25. of shots ago he was absolutely plumb in, and now he's going to need a good shot to keep this break going. So every shot he's playing is pressure. Twenty-six. Tantalisingly, on the incorrect side of the blue. This is where you need to trust your technique. Yeah, absolutely. Now can he stretch and reach it? 31. Maybe getting the small little extension on the end of the queue. But this is... I think, Phil, if you can pot this and get on the black, I think this could be the frame and match winner. 32. Excellent shot. Nicely on the black. A lovely angle on the black as well. We've seen so many trials and tribulations in this tournament. Is there going to be another late twist? Or can Brussel hold himself together and continue the fine scoring we've seen in this high stakes contest? 39. 40. Well, he's worked himself into a wonderful position now. Plenty of loose reds, just keep close control on that cue ball. Don't get straight on the black. And ben Wollaston can only sit and wait and ponder. Will he get another chance? It's going to take a huge mistake 48. for Brussel if he does. sitting out the previous two frames and being the victim of cruel 55. fortune with Wollaston's fluke pink. What a response this is. Well, we said this would test him, didn't we? We waited to see what sort of response, particularly with the fluke and the couple of centuries thrown at him, but he's responded 56. in abundance. Very close to the winning line. You're getting excited. Just held short of those two reds. 63. 63 to break. So red and colour will be enough. And this 64. has been a wonderful break from Luca Brussel. Top quality. It's been a top quality match, Phil. I mean, we might have another century here, but what a finish. 64. Incident, quality, meaning. That's all you need in 70. a snooker match. And that's what's been served up. He's from the town of Dilson, Stockham, in Belgium. And he's done them proud. 78. The draw is what he needed. He will top the group. He's the champion. 
but boy, was he pushed. Eighty-six. Yeah, and bad luck goes to the runner-up Ben Wollaston. But what a performance for him! Eighty-seven. Over these twelve days or so, and what a performance in this final match as well. Put it up to Luca Brissell. Gave it everything, and just one pot where the red almost went in in this final frame. And just eluded him. Nice. And he's sat down in his chair ever since, but it's been a fantastic tournament and a fantastic final match from both players. Yes, Wollaston was so close, literally. They say that snooker's a game of fractions. He's red at the start of this frame, a reminder of that. Ken, I think you'll agree. 95. It's not an exaggeration to say that the finest match of the entire tournament has been the last one. Yeah, without a shadow of doubt. It's had everything, hasn't it? A lot of tension, that fluke ping. Could have changed the whole match on its head. It almost did. And ben Wilson came so close. Had that red gone in at the beginning of the frame, this could have been... His. 102. He missed. Um, it's been all Luca, but I have to say, Luca's response has been fantastic, Phil. 103. Each of the last three frames of the tournament have featured a century. The guys at the very top of this game's tree all would be proud of the performance of both players in this match. 108. And this would be great for his confidence going forward as well. Luca Brissell, of course, the World Championship. Qualifier is coming up the end of July. 111. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of this man over the next few years at the business end of tournament. Go on, get in the brown. No, too much to ask. They can't shake hands, but what a finish. Luca Brassell is the Matchroom.live Championship League winner. Congratulations to him. Brassell, brilliant. We will see the presentation after the break. Well, look at myself full. Twelve. One hundred and twenty six in the frame, Ben Wilson. Russell, 111 on the frame. The tournament is complete, and what a finish we've had. Never has a draw in snooker been more enthralling. Three centuries to finish. Luke Brussel needed a point from the last match, and he just about got it. But what an effort from Ben Wollaston. A cracking end to a tremendous tournament. Here's confirmation. Brussel is your champion. Five points from the final group. Wollaston, what an effort to finish second. Stuart Bingham and Ryan Day, third and fourth, respectively. So David Hendon is down by the table to interview our champion. With a great break. What are your emotions right now? Uh, unbelievable, really. Uh, probably the biggest test of my career, that frame, uh, because Ben was playing so well. Uh, under the circumstances and yeah to win a title it's just amazing he had that fluke on the pink of course made a great break off it in the second frame made a great break in the third frame but you look really cool in that last frame did you feel cool not really uh, most of the time I'm, I'm pretty cool 
under pressure, but this time I was very nervous. I was shaking on every shot. Uh, as soon as I got to 50, 60, I knew I wasn't going to miss anymore. But before that, it was a, it was a struggle. Uh, maybe it didn't look like it, but it was, yeah. It's been a, a more hassle for you just to get to the tournament, obviously, driving from Belgium back again, back again, having won the first group. But it's all been worthwhile, hasn't it? Now you've won the, the competition. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as I was, I was here on Sunday already, and I had to play on Wednesday, so I had to stay quarantined for three days. And yeah, obviously, if you win the tournament, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm over the moon. Don't know what to say really. <laughs> well, what we can say, Luca, you'll be back here in November at this very venue because you're in the Champion of Champions. So that's a real bonus, huge event to, to get into. A bit of icing on, on the cake there. Yeah, that's massive. Uh, I think that's what made this final a little bit more special knowing that uh, the winner would get to the champion of champions. So, uh, yeah, massive bonus for me and uh, really looking forward to that already. Well, congratulations, Luke. If you put the microphone down, we can't hand you the trophy, but you can pick it up. You're our champion. Congratulations. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you very much.